Hey guys, welcome back for another episode of The Suited Shootist. And for a lot of you guys, this is your first new video. So welcome aboard and thank you so much. For those of you unfamiliar, Chris Baker over at Lucky Gunner was gracious enough to mention me in their latest video that they dropped last week. And holy crap, did that just blow up. And the amount of interest and the amount of positive feedback that I've gotten thanks to that has been huge. I cannot express enough appreciation for that, both from the folks over at Lucky Gunner, as well as to all of you that found the channel through that. Um, so, you know, again, I, I really appreciate all of that. If there are any questions that all of y'all have, please, by all means, throw them down in the comments because that's why I'm here is to help people navigate this whole process. Also, plus side, this allows me to finally make good on my 1,000 subscriber giveaway. Pulled all of the publicly available subscribers, ran them through a spreadsheet, did the random number thing, and Brian Snow, congratulations. You are the winner of this little, uh, this little swag pack. It's just a, a couple things that I put together. It's not sponsored or anything, but uh, I just wanted to kind of show my appreciation to everybody that's been supporting the channel. So thank you. I'll get in touch with you and we can kind of work that out from there. But that's not why we're here. What I wanted to touch on today was actually something that was highlighted and embarrassingly brought to my attention in the Lucky Gunner video. So if you didn't catch it, the video clip that Chris featured was from one of my older episodes where I was talking about how I carried in a more elevated wardrobe. Typically when we start bringing like dress slacks and things into play where the lighter fabrics are not necessarily conducive to supporting the weight of a bigger gun. And asterisk, this was all pre-Enigma. So just to kind of uh, offer some context to that. My, honestly, still one of my preferred methods if I need something that uh, is really discreet is going to be my little 32 kel -Tec on a Raven pocket shield. The problem is, and one of my friends was good enough to kind of privately uh, call me out on this, and that's one of the things that I love about the, uh, the arena of the gun community that I occupy is that there is a high level of accountability and everybody's trying to keep each other honest. It's not, uh, it's not just kind of shit posting and ball busting, but people actually working to make each other better. When I was reholstering, I was literally just cupping the bottom of this pocket shield to the point where I was driving the muzzle of the gun towards my palm, which is just stupid. <laughs> um, I, it, there's no excuse for it. I, I was just complacent and uh, lazy with it. So what I'm doing is basically publishing a correction because when it comes to a less structured holster configuration like this, how you reholster it is critically important. And that's just what I want to touch on. I'm also going to give you kind of a closer look at how I have this set up because a few of y'all had questions on that. When the gun comes out of the pocket shield, the mouth of it stays open enough that there's not really a need to, to kind of squish it open. What I've started doing is I take the pocket shield side of it and I just kind of cup it like a C, which then opens the mouth of the holster enough to where I'm now able to safely uh, holster it without putting any of my delicate pink bits in the way of the loud part. Um, this is something that is relatively simple, but I managed to screw it up. And not just once either. I went back, I watched some of the other videos. I did it on at least two separate occasions. And there's no excuse for it. So I really just wanted to highlight the importance of when you are using a less conventional carry setup, it's critically important that you be attentive and intentional with how you operate and how you handle the whole thing. Um, Daryl Bulky is fond of saying he can tell 
just about everything he needs to know about somebody based on how they administratively handle a firearm. And on at least two occasions, I failed that test. So, and if it can happen to me, not that I'm anybody special, but that's the point is I'm just an average guy. So if I'm capable of it, so are you. I want to highlight my shortcomings so that that way you are able to avoid the same mistakes. So again, whenever the pistol is out, what I used to do was this and then put the gun away. That's wrong. You can come at it from either side. What I find is coming at it from the pocket shield side allows me to squish and open the mouth even a little bit more if need be. And then from there, coming over top, because otherwise I'm still crossing pink squishy bits, coming over top, rotate, and then just seat at home. It seems like a silly little thing, but the little things matter, especially given the fact that every time we are handling a firearm, we are making life-altering decisions. Even if it is just in the comfort of your own living room, even if it's unloaded, all that kind of stuff. Complacency has no place when it comes to gun handling. So that's my little PSA. Then also just to give you guys kind of a, a better close up, here is how I have this set up. So I've got the two mounting screws right here. I've got this third screw at the trigger guard just to kind of keep it from dropping too far down. Um, and that's, that's it. It's just, it's a couple of Chicago screws that uh, were left over from a hardware pack that Dark Star Gear had provided when I purchased my most recent holster. So like I said, it's this little configuration. It fits neatly into the hip pocket. And if I need something that is suitably discreet and low profile, this is still a viable option for me. And it's kind of my, the first place I heard it was Caleb Giddings, my rule one gun, which is rule one of a gunfight is have a gun. This is the, I'm not gonna need a gun today gun. So welcome aboard to everybody that uh, has recently subscribed. I used to say, I hope you found this useful, but you know what, if you're watching these, you're getting something out of it. So I'm gonna stop doing that. Um, if you haven't already, we do have a lot of really good in-depth discussion on a lot of these topics in the Bespoke Solutions Facebook group. The link of that is going to be in the description of the video. And also, again, thank you guys for all the comments and all the questions. What I want to do is, especially since we've got so many new arrivals to the channel, is I'd like to consolidate and kind of do a, a slightly more formal Q&A. So if you head over to my Instagram, I'm going to have a post up there, and I'd like that to be the repository of any specific questions that you have that you'd like me to address in that comment section. And that way it's something that I can quickly reference when I start putting that together for a future video. I'll include a link to that down below as well. And until then, everybody have a great week. Stay safe and stay sharp.